What's up? What's up, everybody? Welcome to the party. So it's actually been a snow day here in St. Louis. So I've been off work for a while and had some time to kind of kick it and chill and go through the mountain archive and pulled some really good stuff off the shelves to spin for you guys tonight. And, uh, you know, it's cold outside, but I'm inside with my two co-hosts here just uh, relaxing and uh, I'm in a good mood and I'm in the mood for a little Grateful Dead to start the show. And we're actually going to go with the Grateful Dead double, so two songs in a row by one of the best bands of all time to get us going here. So without further ado, let's hit it. Might as well, might as well. Oh, 
Thank you, thank you to Jerry and the boys for a couple hot numbers there. So that first one's called Might As Well. The song came out in 1976, and I've heard like every single version probably. And uh, I got that one off of this old hard drive that my buddy Sam Brown gave me way back in college. And uh, there were some total gems on there. And to be honest, he is really responsible, if not like maybe the number one person responsible for my music interests being the way they are. He was really influential on me and gave me tons of music because he actually went to Berklee College of Music in Boston for guitar and it was amazing. And he just got exposed to so much stuff there. And that was back in the day before like streaming. So we had to, we had to have like, you know, uh, like hard drives and stuff. So our, uh, you know, computers had sex together, so to speak. And I got a bunch of good stuff, including a ton of Grateful Dead. And uh, yeah, that one's from 61476, and that version's real hot. And then that went into Here Comes Sunshine from Dick's Picks One. And uh, Dick was like, the, you know, the dead's archivist. And uh, I think Dick's Picks One was a pretty good show to choose for the first show of the series. It's an awesome show. And that version actually opens the show, and it is super rocking. So uh, thanks to the dead, as always. Great to start the show with them. One of my absolute favorite bands, and I think a lot of people listening might agree with that statement. They're, they're very influential, and uh, you know they have so much good stuff. So we're going to switch gears here a little bit, as we like to do at Jazz Mountain, and go with one of my other top five artists of all time, Miles Davis. This one's off of Miles in the Sky. Check it out. Thank you. 
Chapter One The very first thing I remember in my early childhood is a flame, a blue flame jumping off a gas stove somebody lit. It might have been me playing around with the stove. I don't remember who it was. Anyway, I remember being shocked by the whoosh of the blue flame jumping off the burner, the suddenness of it. 
That's as far back as I can remember. Any further back than this is just fog, you know, just mystery. But that stove flame is as clear as music is in my mind. I was three years old. I saw that flame and felt that hotness of it close to my face. I felt fear, real fear, for the first time in my life. But I remember it also like some kind of adventure, some kind of weird joy, too. I guess that experience took me someplace in my head I hadn't been before, to some frontier, the edge, maybe, of everything possible. I don't know. I never tried to analyze it before. The fear I had was almost like an invitation, a challenge to go forward into something I knew nothing about. That's why I think my personal philosophy of life and my commitment to everything I believe in started with that moment. I don't know, but I think it might be true. Who knows? What the fuck did I know about anything back then? In my mind, I've always believed and thought since then that my motion had to be forward, away from the heat of that flame. So that's actually Miles Davis himself reading the opening lines of his autobiography entitled Miles. And actually, when people ask me what's your favorite book, I'll pretty much always say Miles by Miles Davis, which to most comes as a surprise. You know, it's not To Kill a Mockingbird or uh, The Old Man in the Sea or something like that. But I love that book. And it's amazing because it feels like he's just talking to you the whole time, the way it's written. Um, he speaks from the heart. It's very candid. And actually, that um, thing you just heard was from the audiobook, and he narrates most of it. So definitely get your hands on that if you can. And, uh, you know, he goes into how the music was made and kind of delves into a lot of the stories and talks about all the characters involved and stuff. And he was a very interesting character. He definitely had his struggles with drugs and, frankly, with women and also racism. But he is definitely one of the geniuses of the universe, I swear. One of my absolute favorite artists. So we're going to switch gears again here on Jazz Mountain, and we're going to play a band called King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, who I've been pretty obsessed with recently, and you can probably tell that by listening to the show. And actually, look out for this soon. We are going to do a Jazz Mountain King Gizzard special coming up here in the next few weeks. I'm still kind of, you know, compiling the song list and doing some research so I can give you guys some fun, cool facts about them. But that's coming up soon. But this one is track one, side one on the album Laminated Denim. It's called The Land Before Timeland. And this one's coming at you from the vinyl archives. And the vinyl is really cool. It's actually like denim textured and with like raised uh, you know, letters and print. It's pretty money. So you can hear that static hiss, which is always nice. Let's rock and roll. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so Mike Ganser and the boys from one of the most underrated and underappreciated jam bands in the scene, Aqueous, who actually I've had the pleasure of getting to know a little bit, particularly the lead guitar player, Mike Ganser. Um, We've seen him a few times. My best buddy Billy and I flew out to see them in Buffalo for uh, actually New Year's Eve going into 2020, which is kind of funny because that was like an ominous year. But we had a great time, like leading into awesome time leading into 2020. But uh, so you know, we we met him. We got the VIP tickets and met them backstage, and that kind of led into a little bit of a friendship. And then during COVID, they had these things where you could uh, have like a virtual hang over Zoom with these guys to support the artists and maybe give them a little bit of cash. And uh, we struck up a pretty good uh, camaraderie. Um, so we were friends with Mike, right? And uh, one time we were texting at night, and uh, he's like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, we're playing video games. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, playing video games. And uh, apparently, like, he loves Tony Hawk Pro Skater, and Billy has Tony Hawk Pro Skater. And we were projecting it onto my wall, so it was like this giant fucking, like, awesome screen of Tony Hawk. And Billy is really good. He's probably the best of all of our friends, and, like, he kills it. So we challenged Mike to like a death match in Tony Hawk. And uh, Mike was very cocky at first and says, like, you talking, have no chance. Talking shit. Talking so much shit. <laughs> so Billy's like, you know what? I can handle this. We, we'll go. And then we sign on to, you know, the PlayStation thing. And then uh, what happened, Billy? So uh, little, little known fact. Um, this is probably not common knowledge, but if you're an excellent guitar player, then there's a good chance that you're excellent at video games too because when you think about all this so playing guitar is all about pushing the right notes at the right time in time and so are video games so so at first i i went up ten thousand points on him and the only reason i I was winning was because he just hadn't landed his first trick long story short (laughs) he beat me about like times a hundred and i'm not i'm not bad i'm not bad at tony hawk i'm like a million some points right and i had about like a hundred thousand yeah yeah he just he mopped the floor with me, and it was embarrassing. And uh, so, you know, uh, there's there's a good there's a good chance that guitar players are also very good at video, <laughs> video games if they want to be. And the funny part was like, at first we were like, Billy's winning, Billy's winning, hell yeah! And then all of a sudden it was like, oh dear god! It just took him like twenty yeah. seconds to land his first trick, and then it was it was it was it was done after that. Game over. Game over. Uh, I, I I I'm embarrassed, you know. <laughs> and then I asked him like, hey Mike, like. Uh, in terms of like world rankings, like versus guitar versus like Tony Hawk Pro Skater, like where do you think you rank higher? And he immediately said like Tony Hawk Pro Skater for sure, yeah. which is hilarious. I'm not sure if I totally agree because I think he's like he's one of the, he's a top notch guitar player. He's like one, he's just as good as that you can yeah. get, you know. Especially if you've seen this band Aqueous live because they just captivate you and they're so fun. We went out to see him in uh, Buffalo, like we were saying for New Year's, and then one night was like '70s night, and then New Year's Eve was '80s night. So they play like a good mix of like covers and also songs of theirs that sounded like seventies and eighties songs, and it was just an absolute blast. It was, it was, such it was a good so fun. It was so much fun. Yeah, let's it, go Buffalo. And I, I don't think they're playing anymore. And I think it's su- it's such a tragedy. It is such a tragedy. Yeah. But Ganser's gonna have a he, he's he's gonna do stuff. He, he's, yeah. He's gonna be okay. He's too talented not to be. So. Yeah. The thing is, the band actually split up recently for various reasons. I think they maybe like you know, I can't. I don't really know. I actually can't speak. But you know. Uh, they're not playing as a band anymore. They say it's a hiatus. I really hope it's just a hiatus because we really hope to see him back. And so many of our friends, especially our summer camp friends, Dave had a kid. That's a, Dave that's had a, a kid. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, a yeah. thing. He's so trying to be a good dad. I guess, yeah, you know? but, but uh, they are they are just as good people as they are musicians. Ain't that the truth? E- excellent, excellent individuals. And yeah, they're awesome. And uh, so that's Aquius and Mike, who's great at guitar and video games. But uh, <laughs> Tony Hawk specifically. Yes, Tony Hawk specifically, but <laughs> we're going to change gears here on Jazz Mountain a little bit. we got a couple more for you here. But let's go back to some straight jazz. I'm just, for whatever reason, kind of feeling a it, little Kirby Hancock right here. It's called Jazz Mountain for a reason. Yeah, yeah. let's go. <laughs> Thank you. 
right? Yes. So that was another one from the Jazz Mountain Vinyl Archive. And it's Herbie Hancock along with his friends Ron Carter on the bass, Tony Williams on the drums, and my main man Freddie Hubbard on the trumpet. And that's a total classic album, by the way, called Empyrean Isles. And actually that track, Cantaloupe Island, was recorded by Herbie a bunch of different ways with a bunch of different uh, lineups throughout his career. But that is the OG version coming at you. So we got time for one more here for the first set on Jazz Mountain. And this is coming via the request line, but not from someone calling in, but from a cat meowing on the other side of the room here. I think my best boy, Prince Caspian, wants to hear his namesake. So uh, we're going to play another vinyl from that series of four live vinyls that Fish put out a few years ago. And this is Prince Caspian from Magnaball 2015. Get ready to rock. Thanks so much for listening, guys. We'll see you in set two. Peace. Instead of 